I'm doing it again, working on my deck. <laughs> it's pretty amazing when you have a, a solid wall for a barrier, you know, on your deck and you're like upstairs and you're told you really can't have anything over the top of it, you know, like your head. <laughs> okay. Meaning everything else, you know, in California, you can't have barbecues and, you know, it is pretty much, you pretty much can't do just about anything you think you might normally do. You flat out can't do because somebody somewhere is going to think something just ain't quite right. And for somebody like me, who loves a good challenge? <laughs> I just smile, listen, go, okay, you know, and I'm wearing my Quinault Landing Hotel shirt that I used to be the, start off as a caretaker and wound up being the general manager, <laughs> more or less, or the, the operating manager, and uh, made him a lot of money. And funny thing was, was that one of their employees just didn't like me. Wound up getting fired in the end. And eventually, even the building burned down, which is kind of strange considering that it had. <laughs> That's a long story, but the Lord always has a way of working things out. For me, when I first started working on this deck, you know, I thought of my wife. You know, I used to see her come out here and she'd be sitting down and she'd have her Bible open and you know, I'd watch her and she'd never know I was watching and she read all the way through the Bible, you know, and started in again. And I thought, well, that was cool. You know, I had told her to, but I didn't think she would. <laughs> and then she would, you know, put her Bible down and she'd close her eyes and she'd pray. Now, she likes to say that, you know, I have these wonderful prayers and she loves to hear me pray, but, you know, I'm not one of those every day kind of, man, you know, consistently we're going to close our eyes and, you know, chalk off the list, you know, and pray for every single person. I kind of go, Lord, you got them. You take care of them. You deal with it. It's yours. That will be done. You know? Move on to the next one. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, maybe I got more faith. I don't know. But anyways, you know, she prays every day, you know, and you can, you can see it. So, because she's a smoker, you know, she don't smoke inside, so she has to come out on the porch, and I thought, well, how to make the porch nice, so in the summer, I had a lot of plants, and made it nice, and then the plants grew up too tall, and I was told I had to take them down, so I took them down, <laughs> then I moved them into windows, <laughs> well, they're still here, you know, they're just inside the window now, but it just amazes me how different things you have to do in order to you know, you have good intentions, but somehow there's always something that comes up. Well, so I just tinker and come out and sit here and pray. And about the time that I think that I, you know, am done rearranging things, I wind up doing it again and making something really nice out of what I can't do by making it into what I can do. Because, you see, that's what God does. God takes your best effort and you commit it to him as it says to in Psalms commit your way unto the Lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass that you just do your best you know and then he'll he'll give you some inspiration you know he'll he'll show you some little things that maybe you can do I know for myself you know I take a lot of junk wood and fix it up nice and take a lot of this and a lot of that a lot of dumpster diving and <laughs> Yes, I'm one of those. I dumpster up. But uh, take a lot of freebies, put it together, toss it in the air, and it comes out perfect. <laughs> Something like that. So I've been working on the porch, enjoying it, and getting out in the fresh air, and celebrating just how beautiful it's turning out. I showed my wife last night, and she was impressed with just one side that I had pretty much completed. Then now I've added some more things, you know. Now I've been working on this other side, and it's looking really nice. And 
I'm kind of excited. You know, it's like, yeah, that looks pretty good. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but sometimes I think, you know, it's not about lemons and lemonade so much as it is about just using what you got, trusting the Lord for it, and thanking Him for where you're at. You know, use what you got, thank Him and bless Him, and God will give you the inspiration. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For He is faithful that promised. God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Did you know God is in you? Because <laughs> He promised you. There you go. Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, you shall be glad also with exceeding joy. You know, as much as I don't like to say, you know, a hangnail is a, a trial and a tribulation, but sometimes people have funny things that really, you know, aggravate them and they go through these things that maybe, maybe for you and I wouldn't be such a big deal, you know. Like, for me, you know, 9-11 wasn't such a big deal. It was like, okay, some terrorist, you know, flew into the side of a building and wiped out thousands of people. I was thinking, gee, you know, I remember back in the Vietnam era, you know, when they were bombing, you know, embassies, you know, here in America, <laughs> you know, and doing things like that. And, I remembered uh, kind of like over in Oklahoma City, you know, kind of that too. And the only thing I thought about at the time was not how shocked or anything, but just how quickly people got religion. <laughs> yeah, and everywhere you went, people were waving, they were friendly, they had their flags out, they were praying. Man, I remember right before 9-11, it was getting pretty ungodly. Suddenly after 9-11, everybody got God. Man, I was, I was shocked, of course. At the same time, I was a little suspicious about just how long it would last. <laughs> it didn't take that long. But, you know, such as it is, people are funny that way. But for me, big things aren't a big deal. Little things sometimes irritate me. You know, like somebody teaching something that's just really off the wall, you know, that stop someone from getting closer to God. You know, that just irritates me, man. I just go nuts. You know, I want to <coughs> strangle them. Now, maybe for you, that don't bother you. You know, it's like, eh, who cares? You know, they're always dividing and, you know, not getting along. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe each one of us have our own little buttons that get pushed. So, maybe your trials are different than mine and maybe we ought to you know, recognize that God, no matter what you're going through, whether it's a big thing or a little thing, He'll take you through it and take care of you in it. That being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Huh. I think that means in love and stay in love. Don't you? Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And he that keeps his commandments dwells in him, and he in him. We are his workmanship. They brought great stones. Stone? 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 Where? Where? Oh, sorry, that's me. Costly stones and huge stones to lay the foundation of the house. The house, when it was in building, was built of stone made ready for it was brought thither. Hmm. Thither and thither. So that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was being built. You also are lively stones and are built up of a spiritual house 
built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. You are God's building. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. So, my deck, as I've been working on it, it's been getting better each time that I work on it. And each time that I kind of like incarnated it into being a little bit better, it's gotten nicer and easier to leave the way it is. That's kind of like what God is doing with you. You're getting better. <laughs> Surprising as that may be. And each time that he brings you to an awareness of that, about the only thing you can say is, cool. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Because step by step, you're getting there. And it won't be long until you will see how you fit perfectly together, framed, cut, hewn, and just designed by God to be one with the entire body of Christ. Wouldn't that be something? Get along with everybody because you're in love with God, rooted and grounded in love. Maybe that's the answer. Because I love to do this, I don't mind being told I can't do something, but I just do it a different way. <laughs> and still love to do it. Matter of fact, maybe that's why it happened in the first place. So that I could redo it because I love to do it. Praise the Lord. <laughs>